Hi, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. Listen, with all the stuff that is going on right now in the nation of Israel, all the events surrounding this war, I'm going to come back on here and recover some ground that I, I have just covered in some other videos and put some things together for you. So you don't get fooled. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the word of God. Thank you for our salvation, Lord, for the blood of Jesus that was shed to cover all of our sins. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the word of God and thank you for Jesus. Lord, help us. Help us to understand your truth and what is happening in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. So what happened this week? A uh, Baptist hospital in Gaza burned up, got hit by a rocket and burned up. And, of course, the Hamas propaganda wing immediately came on and said, look, Israel just targeted and blew up our, this hospital. Well, it immediately became apparent by both video evidence and audio evidence that no, it was a misfired Islamic Jihad rocket from right there that came down and got the hospital. Uh, it's uh, irrefutable, 100%. But you will notice that nobody cares. They're still pushing the narrative, Israel did it, Israel did it, Israel did it, right? They don't care. They, truth is irrelevant in Islam. That's what I want to talk about. Truth is 100% irrelevant in Islam. Islam is not, a, is not a religion of peace. The only peace that you will find in Islam is the peace that comes when all unbelievers, all those who will not convert and pay tribute, have been killed. That's the peace of Islam. That is what the Quran, this is, this is what the Quran teaches and preaches. The Quran is not a really long book. Uh, this, is, this one's kind of fat, but that's because it has the Arabic and the exact translation of the Arabic right there. So it's really like two books in one. You can get Qurans that big. First time I read the Quran took me about three hours, front to back. Well, of course, Quran is one book, and it was narrated, supposedly, by one man, this Prophet Muhammad. All right? Uh, he was illiterate, so what he would have to do was narrate it, and it was the things that he said, and somebody else, I guess, had to write it down and save it and put it all together, you know, on palm leaves or whatever, and put it together into the Quran later. But when you compare this one book, now this guy goes up into a cave near Mecca. This is 600 years after the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> after, after all the Bible, all 66 books of the Bible have been completed for hundreds of years, 39 books of your Old Testament, 27 books of your New Testament, written by 40 authors over a period of over 1,500 years. This is a body of sacred literature which is absolutely 100% scientifically proven to be supernatural and of God because it tells history in advance with a 100% accuracy rate. So it speaks with one voice. 40 authors all speaking with one voice and telling you history before it happens. The Bible is scientifically proven to be of supernatural origin from someone who lives outside of time and eternity. And that is this book. And then 600 years later, here in Mecca, 
comes this guy Muhammad along, come along. He says he goes up into a cave and he meets an angel who tells him, no, that's all wrong. <laughs> I'm going to give you the real story, right? He meets an angel up there in a cave. You know, the Bible says, though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. What? Let him be accursed. Goes on in the next verse. And he says, as we said before, so say again. If anybody preaches any other gospel than that gospel, that gospel, the gospel of the grace of God, as revealed by the apostle Paul. Amen. <laughs> the gospel of the grace of God. Anybody pre preaches any other gospel but that. Let him be accursed. Let him be accursed. Amen. But, uh, you know, Muhammad, he runs into an angel up there. You know, my, my Bible says, marvel not, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So Muhammad goes up there into that cave. He sits down with Satan himself and uh, gets this download to start this religion. Uh, and I'm here to tell you, uh, this religion is something else. It's something else. Uh, you, you ain't never heard of Christian terrorists. You never heard of Buddhist terrorists or, or Hindu terrorists. Uh, you know, they already have that terror. You're an Islamic terrorist because that's their religion. The 35 verses in the Quran say, kill them all. <laughs> I just give you a couple of them. All right. Um, and again, I, I, I bear with me. I, I am not as fast. <laughs> turning to chapter and verse in the Quran as I am with my Bible, of course. Uh, but uh, let's go to uh, Surah. Surahs are what they call their chapters. Uh, Surah 9, chapter 9, verse verse 5. Surah 9 and 5. And Surah 9 and 5 says this. Proclaim a woeful punishment to the unbelievers, except to those idolaters who have honored their treaties with you in every detail and aided none against you. With these, keep faith. Until their treaties have run their term, God loves the righteous. When the sacred months are over, slay the idolaters wherever you find them, arrest them, besiege them, lie in ambush everywhere for them. If they repent and take to prayer and render the alms levy, allow them to go their way. God is forgiving and merciful. What do you say? He said, when you make a we make a treaty with somebody, as soon as the treaty is over, kill them, kill them, kill them. <laughs> and he said, what? And may, but if they if they bow down and pay the levy, in other words, if they submit, convert, and give you money, then then let them live. All right. That's that's Islam. That's what it says over and over and over in Quran in the Quran. That's the aim of Islam is to terrify you and kill you until you bow down and give them money. That's, that's, that's the aim of this book. Uh, 47, four. 47 and four. When you meet the unbelievers in the battlefield, strike off their heads. And when you've laid them low, bind your captives firmly, then grant them their freedom or take ransom from them until war shall lay down her burdens. So, you know, if, if they lay down, bow down and pay you money, then they can live. The only people allowed to live on planet Earth, according to this book, are those that bow down to Islam and pay their tribute. Hey. Sounds like a shakedown to me. <laughs> sounds sounds like armed robbery to me. Sounds like murder and armed robbery. <laughs> a religion based on murder, extortion, and armed robbery. Amen. So uh, then uh, 2, 191. Two, 191. All right. 2 and... Here it is. <laughs> Slay them. Wherever you find them, drive them out of the places from which they drove you. Idolatry is more grievous than bloodshed.
533. I'm just giving you a sample. It's in here, this, this stuff's in here 23 times. Five thirty-three. Those that make war against God and his apostle and spread disorder in the land shall be put to death or crucified or have their hands and feet cut off on alternate sides or be banished from the country. They shall be held up to shame in this world and sternly punished in the hereafter. And who makes war? They're talking about making war. They're talking about not submitting. That's what they call making war. We come in and tell you to submit to Islam and you resist us, then you're making war against us. Anybody that won't bow down gets their head cut off or their hands cut off or tortured. Or, I mean, look at what the Hamas terrorists did when they went into Israel here the other day. Huh? They cut off the heads of babies. They drug the women out into the streets and raped them. Well, how could they do that if they're supposed to be re doing this for religion and they're supposed to be righteous and, and they're supposed to be good? Yeah. That's what they tell you. All right. So now their religion is to terrorize you. Look at 8 and 60. Say terrorism, Islamic terrorism is the tenant of the religion. This is, this is what they do. They're to terrorize you and kill you, make you bow down, make you submit, make you pay. Okay, what I say? Uh, 10, 860. All right. Here we go. <laughs> if you fear treachery from any of your allies, if you're even suspicious that somebody may, may try to rise up and, 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 and to get, get your knee off their neck. huh? You may fairly retaliate by breaking off your treaty with them. God does not love the treacherous. Let not the unbelievers think they will ever get away. They have not the power so to do. See, anybody who doesn't bow down to Islam is an unbeliever and they are at war with. Muster against them all the men and Calvary at your command, so that you may what? Strike terror into the enemy of God and your enemy. Terrorism is the tool, the methodology, and the command of Islam. That's what they're supposed to do. All right. And you say, well, all, you say, all. All Muslims aren't like that. That's just the terrorists. The other Muslims, they like peace. Oh, really? So you're telling me that all these other Muslims that say that they want peace and they're not terrorists, they're all going against the Quran? They're all going against every single command of the Quran? <laughs> okay, this is where that comes from. There's the doctrine of Hudna. The doctrine of Hudna basically says this. It says, in order to get the advantage over the enemy, you can tell him whatever you got to tell him. Any lie is justified as long as it gets you in close enough to stick a knife in their back. That's what the doctrine of Hudna is. Any lie, any act, whatever you got to do or can do that, that spreads Islam that is beneficial to the program here. You can lie, kill, cheat, whatever you got to do. It doesn't matter because they're unbelievers. You, whatever you got to do to the unbeliever is fine as long, as long as we conquer them. Amen? So you can find that in Surah 328. I'm telling you, <laughs> this book is wicked. It's demonic. It's satanic. All right. All right. Let believers not make friend friends with infidels in preference to the faithful. He that does this has nothing to hope for from God. Okay. I'm telling you right there. 
You're not their friend. <laughs> Amen? Except in self-defense. God admonishes you to fear him, for to God you shall return. So whether you hide what is in your hearts or reveal it, it is known to God. He knows all the heavens and the earth contain. God has power over all things. It says don't make friends with the infidels unless it's a self-defense and you have to. And so then you got to hide what you, the truth in your heart and tell them, tell them whatever. Tell them whatever you need to tell them in order to get the advantage over them. Uh, and that is uh, also in 16106. So I'm not, hey, I ain't smutting them up. I'm giving it to you uh, chapter and verse, line upon line from their game book. <laughs> All right, what I say? Uh, 16106. 16106. Those who are forced to recant while their heart remains loyal to the faith shall be absolved. But those who deny God after professing Islam and open their bosom to unbelief shall incur the wrath of God. So it's okay. I mean, you can recant. Uh, you you can recant. You can lie. You can you can disclaim what you believe about this book. A, 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 as long as as long as you don't really mean it. <laughs> hey man, as long as you're still with the program. And so I'm here to tell you that they're all with the program. Anybody that calls themselves a Muslim, anybody that believes in Islam, a Mohammedan. They go by this book. And so whatever they're telling you is a lie to promote you being brought into subjection, terrorized, or killed. That's the goal. That's, that's, that's the end of this religion, to put in subjection, terrorize, and murder all of humanity that will not bow down and submit to them and pay them tribute. That's what this book says. And anybody who subscribes to Islam and, and claims Islam and says they're a Muslim, in their heart of hearts, no matter what they tell you, they're lying to you because their book told them to lie to you. Their book told them to trick you and let you in and be their friend until they get enough people around to stick a knife in your back. And that's what, and that's what this out of this hudna doctrine I'm talking about, uh, is explained more. Uh, uh, it's called El Taqiyya, and that, that's in the other Islamic holy book, the Holy Hadith, which is uh, history and, and, and writings about the times of Muhammad and, and some of the people surrounding him. Uh, and in the Hadith, uh, uh, 5, 59, semicolon 369, it talks about when he was just first getting started in Mecca, that there were polytheists, uh, uh, the pagan polytheists all around him. And it talked about that what he did as his tactic, he pretended that that was okay with him. Uh, and he even promoted the worship of the three daughters of Allah as other god goddesses. And, uh, uh, and, and, and it went along like that. Oh, that's fine. And we're with you and la, la, la. Until... He had 40 soldiers. Once he had 40 soldiers, then he was able to go and slaughter and kill them. Uh, that's the El Taqiyya. So whatever it takes to gain the advantage over the unbeliever so he will, to make him submit or kill him. That's, that is the religion. And, uh, you know, and I'm telling you, uh, uh, this guy, Muhammad, uh, he had multiple wives. And one he married when she was like eight years old. He was a pedophile, consummated with this little girl. He was a pedophile. One of his wives, he took from his son-in-law. Son, his son-in-law had a had a good-looking wife. <laughs> and, and, I mean, and, and, and he said, he said, "Hey, I think she's hot, man. Give her to me, right?" And so. He goes off in the tent with his with his Satan angel, and he comes out. I just got a revelation from God. You're supposed to give me your wife. <laughs> All right. 
Surah 33. You think I'm kidding? Well, read it, read it from the book, man. Surah 33, 36. Thirty-three. Here's what he said. It is not for true believers, men or women, to take their choice in their affairs if God and his apostle had dec has decreed otherwise. Now, this guy is uh, um, uh, he, Zaid. Zaid is his son-in-law. Uh, he said, uh, uh, he that disobeys God and his apostle strays far indeed. You said to the man whom God and yourself have favor, keep your wife and have fear of God. You sought to hide in your heart what God was to reveal. Because <laughs> Zaid was trying to keep his wife. <laughs> Amen. You were afraid of man, although it would have been more proper to fear God. And when Zaid divorced his wife, we gave her to you in marriage <laughs> so that it should become legitimate for true believers to wed the wives of their adopted sons if they divorce them god's will must needs be done <laughs> how how funky is that huh how how wicked is that he had he had the hots for for his adopted son's wife and come out and said allah said you're supposed to give her to me so you know and put it in the quran as as, as part of your religion Ooh we, ooh we, ooh we, and how do we how do we treat them wives? <laughs> Look in four thirty four. Four thirty four. Here you go, ladies. <laughs> Any ladies that might have a little bit of a soft spot spot in their heart for this religion, for this wickedness, for Islam. Here's hey, here's what Islam thinks of you. Men have authority over women because God has made one superior to the other and because they spend their wealth to maintain them. Good women are obedient. They guard their unseen parts because God has guarded them. As for those from whom you fear disobedience, you just fear, just have a suspicion. If those who you fear disobedience, admonish them and send them to their beds apart and beat them. Beat them. If you think she's fixing to get out of line, beat her. Huh? <laughs> wow. I'm telling you, man. It, it just shows you the corruption that is in the heart of man and the wickedness that is in human nature that millions, millions of people since around 600 AD, that millions of people whole nations, almost all of Arabs, and man, they've gone down, and, and like, like Indonesia, there's, there's, there's more Muslims in Indonesia than there is in the Middle East, that millions of people around the world are so wicked, so depraved, so without God, that they would adopt this as a, as, as a religion. And the time has come, the time has come for for those who, who know the truth, who know the Lord, to remain silent no longer. We, we, we can't keep playing the game of, oh, it's just another religion. It's another way to God. And they're really peaceful. And the terrorists are just the bad ones. No, no, they all go by that book. They all believe that book. And any one of them that's telling you anything else is lying to you so that they can get in close enough and stick the knife in your back. That is Islam. And with all that's going on in the world, if you're a believer in the word of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to be aware of that. And we need, we need to speak the truth in love. Hey, I don't hate the Islamic people, but I hate that religion. And I hate the devil that created that religion. It's evil and it's wicked. And those people need the Lord Jesus Christ. They and 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 Muslims are coming to Christ. 
in these days. And so we need to continue to love on, love them and, 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 and present the gospel. But we must not remain silent about just how evil, wrong, and wicked that that religion is. I hope that was some help to you. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. God will bless those that bless Israel and curse those that curse Israel. Hey, we live in exciting times. He's coming back soon. We'll see you next time. You know I love you. God bless you.